Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Thanks for tuning in today. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the parking brake shoes on a rear disc brake setup similar to this one. I think job one is to identify the type of parking brake setup that you have. Uh, one type is the type we'll be dealing with today, which has parking brake shoes inside the hat of the rotor to activate the parking brake. The other type uses the rear brake caliper uh, to activate the parking brake. And the way to differentiate between the two different types is to follow the parking brake cable, which is what we have here. And in this case, this one goes down and into the back of the area behind the brake rotor. So this definitely indicates that we have a uh, parking brake assembly in behind the brake rotor on this type. If you follow the parking brake cable and it leads you to the brake caliper, then you have a different style of parking brake setup and this video will not apply to your system. Uh, so that style uses the rear brake caliper to apply the parking brake. The other style looks something like this, and if you follow the parking brake cable uh, on this one, it's up underneath this cover and attaches here to the top of the caliper. So that's how you differentiate between the two different types of uh, parking brake setup. I'm going to start by removing the caliper assembly. I could remove this whole thing as a unit, actually. I, I think I might do just that by removing the two fasteners in the back and just removing the entire caliper. To remove the caliper on this vehicle, there are two 14 millimeter fasteners located here and here. I'm gonna remove them now. I'm gonna loosen them both before I remove any one of them completely. You may be performing a brake job or some other, uh, maybe replacement of rotors or something when you do this. Uh, I've already replaced the rear brakes and rotors on this vehicle. It was just discovered during the process of doing that that the rear brake shoes uh, for the parking brake had deteriorated quite a bit and could probably use replacement. Given that the, that's not a part of the regular base braking system and only controls the parking brake, I decided to wait until now to do it. I've done other videos about uh, rear brake jobs and rear caliper removal and things like that with more specific information on this. Uh, for this video, we're really going to focus on that parking brake assembly. With the caliper out of the way, we can remove the rotor. Now, the most challenging thing on Hondas is removing the rotor screws. I've done videos about this. Uh, my favorite tool these days is actually this guy here, and it's called the shake and break. It works with my uh, air hammer, and really it's just a matter of pulling the trigger and twisting this loose, and they come apart very easily. It's obvious that I've already gotten these out and I replaced them. I personally do this. You don't have to put them back in because the wheel holds, holds the rotor back on. I prefer to put them in because it's easier to install the rear brakes, uh, at least in my opinion. But next step would be to remove the rotor assembly. Now, something else that you might encounter when you go to do this, when you go to remove it, it might get stuck. And if it does, you wanna back off the adjustment. And to do that on these Hondas, you have to remove this rubber plug. Before we go there, let's uh, remove these rotor screws. I'm using an impact driver, one of these. I link all my tools and parts down in the description. So if you're curious about where to get one of those, look in the description. Anyway, just a couple hits with a hammer. Knocks these loose, not even. And these have been out recently, so I don't anticipate too much trouble with them. Another method, I'll link a video in the description about this. Uh, there's some controversy about this method, but it's worked for me for years is to take uh, two hammers. I take the ball side of a ball peen hammer like this, place it on the screw, take a second hammer and hit it a few, hit it a few times and that locks it loose. Uh, some people like to drill them. Personally, I think that takes too much time, but it is also an option. I also, anytime I reinstall these, add a little bit of anti-seize to the threads, uh, which seems to make removal easier down the road. All right, as I mentioned, this is just a rubber plug. Uh, sometimes they go missing, but if you're having difficulty removing the rotor, it could be because there's a rust ridge on the inside of the rotor, and I'll show you that in a second. I have an example. And that rust ridge could be catching on the brake shoes, causing it to hang up. So if you go to try to pull this off and it only comes so far, uh, the thing to do is take this plug out, point this down to six o'clock, this hole like, it's, like you'll see it here, and you, You'll be able to see this better after everything is off, but there's an adjustment in here. And I believe to back it off, you push it down. You can hear it click every time I do this. Yeah, clicking it down like this makes it looser. Uh, pushing it in and going up with it makes it tighter. So click it down on these Hondas. 
and that'll make removing the brake rotor easier. And that shows us what we're after. Here's one of the old brake rotors that came off. This is the new one. Uh, what can happen, and what I'm referring to here, is you might notice uh, that there's a ridge, a rust ridge right here. And as I stated, what this can do is this can hold on to the brake shoes. So when you go to try to slide the rotor off, the brake shoes will butt up against this ridge and you won't be able to remove the rotor easily. Uh, and the way I deal with it is I back the adjustment off, which brings in the brake shoes and makes it so that the rotor can more easily be removed. Here's a look at our setup. And this is, once again, strictly for the parking brake. This is not operational during the movement of the vehicle or anything. Uh, but you can clearly see that, at least on mine, that the uh, friction material has deteriorated a great deal. And that's the reason why I'm replacing these. Also, uh, it will help the parking brake travel. Uh, so in other words, when you pull the pedal up, or when you pull the lever up, it won't need to travel as far in order for it to engage. But mostly I'm replacing this due to the deterioration of this uh, material here. It kind of got all rusted. And in fact, I think maybe on the other side, it's even come loose from the metal. You might also note that I've done some patchwork on this metal. Uh, this backing plate rotted out pretty good. So uh, I actually went back in and reattached it with a little bit of welding with what little metal was left. I like to start with some brake clean to clean off all the dust, dirt, and debris. Uh, and I have something underneath to catch that debris as it gets washed away. At the end of the day, this is just a drum brake setup. Uh, it has springs and levers that allow them to activate, but I'll try to give you a closer look inside so that you know what they're supposed to look like before you get started. I think the biggest thing with drum brakes that people run into is that uh, they don't know where stuff goes. So if you were just wondering where stuff went, uh, and that little star wheel there is the adjuster, but this can give you an overview of what you're looking at. Now, you might think you want to remove this flange, and you probably could, but that puts tension on the wheel bearing, and I always get nervous uh, when separating wheel bearings like that. I feel I can work around it. I kind of wish I didn't have to to better illustrate what's happening uh, for the video, but I don't recommend taking this flange off uh, for running the risk of potential wheel bearing issues after the fact. I'm going to start by removing these two return springs here. So these two top return springs are what I'm going to remove first. To do this, I'm going to use this pair of pliers that I have. I found this to be a good tool for this job. They do have special tools for removing uh, brake springs like this. But as I said, I this or sometimes a pair of side cutters can, can also work. In fact, I may resort to that just because I can't seem to get down in there too well or even a pair of needle nose pliers. There's one. So something like this could also work quite well. With the upper springs removed, I'm next gonna go after these spring clips here, which you just push in and grab this inner piece here and twist. I'll show you in a second, but they're not that difficult. There's one on each side that hold the shoes in place. That one's there. So I'm going back to my favorite pliers here, but I'm gonna grab the inner portion like this. And it's also sometimes helpful to go on the other side. This pin goes all the way through the backing plate and then hold that pin because when you push in, like I'm about to here like this, that can actually uh, push the pin out on the back side. So grab, hold, push in, and then turn. So sort of twist it. And you can kind of see that it wants to come out, but that's basically what you're doing. There we are. That knocked it loose. So now we can remove that spring clip. There's a better look at it. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, but this time not one-handed. As stated, you can come in from the backside and hold the back of these pins while you're doing this. And that will help them release a little bit easier. With that stuff removed, I can pull the shoes out from behind here.
And there's one more spring down at the bottom here. I'll try to make sense out of this mess for you. Uh, there's also this upper strut that connects to another spring back here in that second hole. I'm just going to remove that now, but that goes in like this on this setup. So there's sort of a little rise to it that you might see there. And uh, that faces up. And besides, that's where your spring hooks. And on this side, it hooks in the back here. And then last but not least, um, I know this other stuff is still connected, but I'm going to come in and it's really quite easy on this one to just push that off the parking brake cable. So this is the parking brake cable. This is what's connected to the lever inside the vehicle. And then it just hooks around this lever uh, to activate it. And we'll take this over to the bench to finish things up. And here's the mess I made off the car. Um, just to give you some idea, this is the bottom here. This is where the adjuster used to go. Uh, in fact, there's the other end of it there. So there's the, there's the uh, adjuster. And it looks like on this one, the uh, screw part points towards the rear. We'll just set this aside for now. Now these springs should just unhook like that. And this is the upper spring that attached to that uh, peg on the top. And then there's the lower one that attaches to that strut assembly I took off. But we're gonna need to transfer one thing from this. And you can clearly see like at this point, like how bad these were getting. And it's mostly due to corrosion. But once again, this is just a parking brake, so it wasn't like a uh, dire need to do it. Well, anyway, there's a horseshoe clip right here that holds this on. So if you could see that, sort of like a horseshoe clip. There's a couple of different ways to get it off. Um, I sometimes will go in with a flathead screwdriver just to spread things apart uh, on the uh, horseshoe part spread it apart like that to get it off. Sometimes I'll go in with a pair of side cutters to do it and get the initial opening going. So that sort of got things started. It's moved a little bit. Then I'll come in with a pair of channel locks and push it through the rest of the way. Then put part of the pliers on the peg and the other part on the horseshoe part and try to separate them that way because these are soft metal it bends very easily it's usually less awkward when i can not have to keep this in the frame <laughs> there it is you can see that i was able to push it out a little bit more by doing that and then i'll just take my flathead screwdriver and pry it off now there's a little washer that was under that then the lever itself. Then the little peg that everything was on that, I think, depending upon what shoes you get, you'll need that also. But now the brake shoes have been stripped of everything and uh, we can begin replacement. Here are my new brake shoes. I'll link parts and tools in the description for you. If I haven't already mentioned that. If I'm not mistaken, these are all the same. And this isn't like a standard braking setup. Once again, this is just for the parking brake. In fact, I might have done this a handful of times in my career. I want to make sure that they have a similar profile and it looks like they do. We need to reinstall this lever. And that was on the rear shoe. So we'll put the pin back through like this. Hopefully it goes through. Yeah, it went through. And then when it's all said and done, these things need to fit together. So you can see how this is supposed to activate. Like that. So we really just do the reverse of what we just did. Washer, horseshoe, use my pliers to push it the rest of the way. Then I can take my side cutters and just sort of pinch those little ears in so that that can't come back off. So now that part's all assembled. So I think with this, I'm gonna take it over to the wire wheel, clean it up a little bit. We'll add a little bit of lubricant before reassembly. So in addition to the new shoes, I got a new hardware kit, 
which I have here, which is all the springs and stuff. And lo and behold, I look inside and what do I see? Two brand new adjusters. So I didn't need to clean any of those up or uh, reuse those pegs or horseshoes or anything. This, this is a pretty complete kit. Once again, links in the description for stuff. Because I want to continue moving forward, I'm not going to replace this pin or anything. I mean, you can see all this needs to do is this. It's doing, it's doing that just fine. So new adjusters and they've offered some white lithium grease. I'm assuming for this. Hear that? Now listen to the original equipment one. I know it sounds weird, but I'm going to reuse this. And I'm going to say just because after all the corrosion that's been under this truck or whatever you want to call it, this is still here. I worry about this. Not to say that this can't be used. Once again, this is just a parking brake, but you know, this is one of those videos where I have to deal with people making all kinds of comments about all kinds of things. The more stuff I say in the video, the less stuff I have to comment about after the fact. But for me, I'm going to add a little bit of anti-seize, just a little, not a lot, because there wasn't any on this to begin with. I mean, just a very little bit. You can actually gum things up with anti-seize and cause them to stick, especially with old anti-seize like what I have here. And this a little more on this side. Oh yeah, that moves nice. And that's what we're going for. We just want things to move smoothly because there is no self-adjustment. You actually have to go in and do any adjustments with this. There's my adjuster. It's all ready. Long green spring in this case is what works for under here. And if memory serves, the uh, adjuster, the screw portion was pointed towards the rear. I have the new one here. I'm just going to come and hook in. Well, before I put that in, it's easier to do it like this. I'm just going to hook in with that lower spring like that. Then I'll take my adjuster. There we are. Now let's go over the backing plate. Here are the old uh, hold down pins. What's left of them? <laughs> I have new ones. These I will replace. That's a little rusty. There's one on each side. Now there are six bosses. You see here, here, and then down here a little bit. That one there, and there's that one there, and then there's one up top. So there's six of those around the circumference of this. And I'm just going to go in with my uh, wire wheel and just clean those up before installing the shoes. Here's a look at those after cleaning. You can see them a little more clearly now. I'm going to take a little bit of my anti-seize on each one of these. Where the most movement is going to occur is up these top ones. The bottom one's hardly going to move at all. Now to put my pins in, new pins that is. Now I'm going to take the cable and I'm going to get my side cutters. And my other pliers, where are they? So I can slide that back and just hold it with the side cutters like this. Take my assembly with my new shoes. Hopefully it stays together. No, it did not. Because now all I need to do is bring this in, hook that into place, let go with my side cutters, and that's ready. Just gonna do what I did before. Screw part faces towards the back. Run my pin through. You see that those were sort of dog legged over. You only go in one way. These clips, it really doesn't matter how they get positioned, top or bottom, so long as they get on there. This is the fiddly part, I'll be honest. This would be a lot easier without this flange in the way, but it's still doable. Before I get this other side completely in, I'm going to take that strut that goes from one side to the other, just sort of loosely place it.
Now that both of those clips are in, you can see how this is not quite in. Uh, it needs to fit into that slot. Okay, now let's get some springs in here. Let's start with this guy right there. This is everything that came in the hardware kit uh, for the most part, except for the stuff that I just put on over there. But there are four of these uh, springs here, and those are the top ones. And then there are two of these smaller springs, and the smaller spring is gonna go on the lower side, and this one will go on top. So we need three springs per side. We have this, what I'll call the special spring. It's got that uh, configuration underneath. And there's this hole here what we're going for so and just this section gets inserted into the hole like this and then it comes over like that and then it needs to hook in to this hole right here all right I'm using a slightly narrow profile for this one meaning my pliers I'm just gonna pull it up and, oops The final springs, which look like this, this hook back here, the one with that shape, that one goes into the brake shoe, and this one goes up around here. This one will hook in, there's a slot, and you can see it up under there, there's a slot right there. On this side, there's a slot there, and that is where the, uh, this hook goes, like that. And then the other one will hook onto here. I'm gonna do the same with the other side. As far as assembly, that's job done. All right, when I'm doing the adjustment, that's what I'm turning. I'm turning that adjuster. So the screwdriver is going through this hole and everything and into that adjuster. If you remember from earlier, I believe down is, well, either way, you'll only be able to turn it one way with it backed all the way off like this, but the drum will go, where the rotor will go on easier and that'll be our next step. We're gonna put the rotor on and uh, make our adjustment. We wanna make sure that you, the adjustment hole lines up down here and also that you get your uh, screw holes lined up if you plan to reuse them. I do plan to reuse mine. Hmm. Having trouble with this assembly. Make sure everything that goes into a slot is in a slot and it's not pushing it out. So I'm gonna check where my adjuster goes in. Yeah, everything there looks good. Could be my little strut that goes across here. It appears I got some figuring out to do. I'll let you know what I find. I've checked everything and everything is fitting together properly. So there's only one conclusion that I can draw from this, and that is there's too much friction material. So in other words, I have to come in, shave off some of this friction material, and then retry, because there's simply too much of it. And that means I have to take it all apart and put it back together, which I will do off camera. Uh, but I'm gonna take off probably, uh, maybe half of what you see here, and uh, well, We'll try it again and see if the rotor goes on. I'm going to try something. The reason I sound like Darth Vader is on account of my mask and my safety glasses. better and make sure that it moves I don't hear anything hitting so I'm gonna install the uh, rotor screws again and this will keep it straight and true while I make these adjustments 
And I've already put anti-seize on these threads and you can probably tell that I've replaced the rotors recently. So I don't really feel the need to add more anti-seize at this point. Now the way I adjust these, I'll adjust it until it locks up. And what that does is it centers the shoes on the inside of this. Then I'll keep backing it off until it moves. Now you don't want this applying while you're driving down the road, so you want to be sure that it does release all the way and it's not dragging. Kind of tricky on this element because it's all wheel drive. So I've got a little bit of resistance with the drivetrain, but I'm feeling it there, but I'll go. Like once it starts to move, I'll go one more good click. Make sure there really is no contact on the inside of this. Something important to note about this adjustment is that in order for me to be able to move this rotor freely like this on this all wheel drive element is both rear wheels needed to be removed and off the ground. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to turn the rotor in this manner in order to make this adjustment. I'll then come inside the vehicle, apply the parking brake a couple of times. This will also help center things and then recheck my adjustment. By the time you're all done with this, and always start the adjustment at the wheels. So make sure your wheels are all adjusted correctly before you go trying to adjust the cable in here. Uh, but the uh, spec for this is seven to 13 clicks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's more than applied. So it's, it's down towards the bottom of the spec, but it's good. Now I'll recheck the adjustment out here, make sure that I don't hear any dragging, that everything moves freely, and I call that done. I'll reinstall the plug. You really want to reinstall these because without it, debris and junk can get down in here and corrode everything on the inside, so try to keep it clean. Reinstall the caliper. And that's a wrap on replacing parking brake shoes in a rear disc brake setup. Uh, I'll put links in the description to parts, tools, uh, additional information and additional videos for you to make things easy. So if you have questions about anything in this video, please see the description. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask you to head to airatthecarguy.com. Link to that in the description as well. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time. Oh.